thanks to the organizers for uh, the opportunity to speak to you here today. Uh, I'm uh, with my tax, as Martha said, I'm actually based in Ottawa, uh, and I am an upper Canadian, but I do have a very close connection to Nova Scotia in that my wife is from Pictou County. We have a cottage up in Pugwash where we spend a month every summer, and I am really, really heartened by the discussion I've witnessed here over the last couple of days. I think that uh, the discussion that's going on here is exactly, exactly right. I think there was talk from um, representatives from MIT, from Waterloo, and, and the discussion was really around trying to find uh, a spirit of collaboration and cooperation and shared purpose, uh, which is exactly what I'm really getting in the room. I mean, I spend more time than I care to admit at um, conferences dealing with innovation in Ottawa, and it tends to be a litany of complaint and blame, and I haven't picked up any of that here. I think uh, all the ingredients are in place, so I really commend the organizers, and uh, you know, Godspeed to the, to the effort. I think there's a great chance of success. Um, but today here, I'm going to talk about my tax, describe how we try to contribute to the uh, innovation ecosystem that's been discussed so much. Uh, I have prepared some slides, but it is, uh, you know, it's been a long conference, so I'm going to try to go through them pretty briefly, uh, and so perhaps they'll just serve more as a backdrop for what I'm going to be talking about. So I'll start with our origins. MyTax started out as a uh, federal network of centers of excellence in 1999, dedicated to uh, supporting mathematics research between academics and industry. Uh, early in our mandate, we recognized we had a problem. We were having a lot of success actually building these industry partnerships with universities. We had really good research projects coming out of them. But uh, the graduate students coming through those programs invariably left the country. Math PhDs were graduating, some are going to do postdocs in the United States. A lot of them are taking jobs in Silicon Valley and other places. Uh, we were really upset about this because we had put graduate training really at the heart of what we were doing. So we decided it would be important for us to try to find a way to connect these students to Canadian firms, give them experience and networks that they could then build off of with the hopes of retaining them in Canada. So uh, in 2003, we uh, begged and cajoled a number of our industry partners to take uh, students as interns, and we placed 18 students that year. And something pretty amazing happened. Uh, first, a number of the students actually found jobs with their sponsors or with other people they met through their networks, uh, which was great. Uh, more interesting, though, to us was the fact that the companies loved this program. We had to beg them to take the students, but once the internships were done, they all wanted to do it again. And we asked them why, and really it was a case of having the students on site allowed the students to bring the university research expertise right into the heart of the business. And they could learn what the real challenges were inside the business. They could apply the expertise back at the university. They could access university resources, university equipment, and bring it to bear on specific company challenges. In effect, these students became living knowledge transfer mechanisms. And uh, we thought, wow, this is really something. So the program started to grow slowly but surely with math students and computer science students. And um, in 2007, we expanded beyond our traditional sec uh, disciplines, and we started offering this program to all disciplines at the university. Uh, that was the same year that we received our first significant funding, both from the BC government as well as the federal government, who created a federal internship program modeled after ours uh, called uh, the Inter um, Industrial Research and Development Internship Program. And so since then, we've grown substantially. In 2011, we actually spun the organization out into two separate organizations. One is called M Prime, which is the uh, NCE that retains responsibility for mathematics. And now the current MyTax, which is a fully independent not-for-profit dedicated entirely to supporting innovation through uh, industry university collaboration. So here's MyTax today. Uh, you see a picture there of our head office, which is at UBC, but we also have 20 other offices across the country. Uh, we work in close partnership with Canada's research universities. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And we also work very closely with uh, federal and provincial uh, funding agencies, departments across the country to try to address the real nub of how to make innovation happen. So, what is my tax? And here I describe essentially how I see the MyTax mission. And MyTax, we're deeply supportive of this idea of an innovation ecosystem. Uh, we're really committed to using this sort of an ecosystem approach to making Canada an innovation leader. 
We do this by trying to build and, and mostly succeeding at building effective uh, partnerships between industry and academia. And then at the heart of these partnerships, we, are, uh, we, we focus on developing and deploying really excellent uh, talent. We believe, as many of the speakers have said over the last couple of days, that talent is really at the core of innovation. People do innovation, and so we believe that by providing graduate students and postdocs the opportunity to gain experience in industry, to apply their skills, their expertise, their experience in an industrial setting, we really facilitate that process. Um, I'll skip ahead here to how we're actually doing it. So that's the mission. So here's the key ingredients. First, MyTax develops uh, flexible and relevant programming. And I'll go through the programs in, in brief detail in a few minutes. But when we design these, we do these in consultation with all of the partners in that ecosystem. We talk to universities about where they have needs, where their demands aren't being met. We talk to industry, you know, what do they need from the universities, what do they need from students. And we talk to government. I mean, government, I, I have a lot of sympathy for government. There are real policy concerns around this. It's very complicated to address these issues. So we try to put the pieces together from all three of those key partners into developing good, effective programs. Uh, we also are really, we think it's important to be flexible. We, we really try to work with outcomes in mind instead of the processes. We don't get caught up in making sure that we have all of the, the, the proper sort of documents in order, the, the, the proper sort of uh, rules being followed. We understand that, that business research um, needs to be flexible, it needs to be responsive. Uh, we're really interested in finding solutions to exceptional cases because when it comes to industrial R&D, it's all sort of exceptional cases. Every industry is different, every business is different. Uh, so flexibility is really important to us. The second piece here is this partnership approach. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we are formally partnered with Canadian research universities. Uh, we work with them very closely. They sit on our board. They comprise a significant part of our uh, research council. And they participate in a very significant way in the actual design and uh, delivery and development of pro uh, programs to try to address some of these concerns. Industry uh, is a significant partner. Again, uh, represented both on the board and on our research council. The chair of our board is an industry representative. Uh, we are constantly in contact with industry partners trying to figure out, you know, are the programs meeting your needs? What are some gaps that we can help you address? Are there parts of the university ecosystem that we can help you tap into? Uh, and then finally, as I said, uh, we, we work closely with our government funders. We don't just accept checks and walk away. We try to really work together to address these policy concerns. Finally, the third piece, and I think this is really key, is Mindtax is really built on proactive business development. I mean, I get it, uh, you know, everyone wants to see more of this collaboration, but frankly, business leaders are busy running their businesses and don't generally have time to go out and meet individual professors at individual universities, not just across the province, but potentially across the country. That takes a lot of time when you're trying to find that one person whose research lines up with your needs. Uh, in the same way, professors uh, don't have the time and often don't have the inclination to be going to industry events to try to find that company that can commercialize their product or start cold calling people. Uh, I think the idea that we can expect uh, our, our top researchers to also become commercial, uh, commercial agents is, uh, is, is uh, maybe a little bit short-sighted. So what we do is we actually have people on the ground in every province working to go out and meet companies, identify research needs, tap back into the network that we have across the universities and try to match those needs up with the expertise that exists in the universities. And that really gets to the second point there, the, the second bullet around demand-driven innovation. And I think this is a key, I won't spend a lot of time, I have spent a lot of time on this, but I won't today. Um, you know, when it comes to collaboration, it works in different ways. And I think maybe for too long, we've expected that we could sort of push the research out of the universities into the marketplace. And there's certainly a place for that, and I know professors who have spun out successful companies. But uh, this idea of demand-driven innovation sort of flips that around and says, here's a company that has a, a marketable uh, challenge. This is a challenge that they have with something that's pre-existing, with a the technology they have, with a prototype, some sort of element where they know that they actually have a market for something, but they need to access the expertise. And so the actual problem originates in the business and goes back to the company, or goes back to the university, sorry, to access the expertise. Much higher um, probability of success in terms of getting your innovations to market. 
Okay, so now just a broad overview of the programs. And I won't go through the details. You're welcome to read them as I speak. Um, this is MyTax Accelerate, and it's our flagship program. It's the program that grew out of that early mathematics internship uh, program that I described. Um, essentially, this pairs graduate students and postdocs with companies for, for relatively short research projects. They're built off four-month units, but they can be combined into multiples, uh, you know, two or three at a time. They can be combined to several students at a time. So it's really a modular approach built on sort of smaller research units. Um, we work across all sectors, all disciplines. Uh, despite our uh, science and mathematics background, about 15 to 20% of what we do now in Accelerate is with humanities and social science students, and that's an area where we're still working to grow and expand. Um, and about 60% of our companies, we've worked now with almost 2,000 companies across the country, and about 60% of them are small and medium enterprise, which have, traditionally don't have much in the way of R&D. Many of those companies have actually never engaged in R&D. Uh, so this is actually a nice sort of low-cost, low-risk way for these companies to tap into the university system and try some research. Uh, I think I, what I'd like to do maybe is give a, a, an example, a bit of a story that, is, that serves as a bit of a, a touchstone at my tax that really demonstrates how this works when it works perfectly. So um, this was years and years ago, uh, I think it was actually even back when we were still doing our math and computer science, where one of our MyTax staff was actually at a party and got talking to a roofer at the party. And being a MyTax staff, started the pitch and about what they do and so on and so forth. And the roofer said, look, I'm a roofer. We don't have research problems in roofing. Um, but the longer they talked, it turns out that the roofer did have a research problem. And that problem was that given modern architecture, it's actually pretty hard to estimate the amount of material you need to do a roof. Uh, with all that, you know, back in the old days with a basic straightforward uh, pitched roof, it was straightforward. Now there's all these different uh, aspects. And it's a problem because if you get it wrong, um, you don't get the contract. I mean, if you, over, if you overestimate, you don't get the contract. If you underestimate, then you end up uh, you know, eating the cost. So we actually paired this roofer up with a computer science student who worked for a professor working in 3D imaging. And together, uh, the professor and student developed software that could take digital imagery and convert them into a 3D model that could then be used to estimate material. Well, that roofer now sells commercial roofing software in addition to doing roofing. And I mean, that's innovation. That's someone who works in an industry where you would never guess that university research would have an impact. And yet, here now, this, this roofer has expanded uh, his sort of market, his activity. Uh, we see that same sort of thing in less dramatic ways all the time. Um, OK, so getting back to the slides here, uh, we've had phenomenal growth. Uh, we started with 18 internships 10 years ago. This year we'll do more than 2,000 internships across the country. Um, we have a target of actually getting to 10,000 internships. 2,000 is a lot, but 10,000 represents an opportunity to really make a, a transformative change. We believe that these, will, these can serve as a key mechanism, not the only mechanism. I think that the last slide that uh, Dr. Travis showed with all the different players, I think it's important to have lots of different approaches. But we believe that this is a really effective mechanism for connecting researchers with companies in a really effective way to transfer knowledge, as well as providing opportunities for students to gain experience, gain skills, uh, build networks, and, and sort of think about how they can do research outside of the academic system. Uh, I, I won't go into this slide at all, um, except to just highlight, I think it's obvious, uh, and I've been highlighting the benefits to students and the benefits to the companies, but there are also benefits to the researchers involved, the supervisors, that go beyond simply having uh, a, a bit of extra funding and uh, you know, improved prospects for your students. Uh, you know, three quarters of our students uh, incorporate their research into their thesis. This is core research. This isn't side research. This isn't extra research. This is core research that's actually going on in the lab. OK, even more quickly over these other programs. My Tax Elevate, this was developed really in response uh, to concerns we were getting from industry that there was a lack of R&D management talent, that you got to a certain size, you needed to actually move beyond a single researcher to someone who could you know, basically come up with a strategy, manage a team, and so on. We also noted that there's, a, that there's a, an excess of postdocs in the country, 6,000 postdocs roughly, maybe 2,000 of them will get faculty positions. So we put two and two together, and thought, you know what, here's a, here's a potential pool of managers. So we've built a program based on the Accelerate model, but more um, in-depth, longer term, larger projects with supplementary management um, training. 
We've run a three-year pilot. We're proud to have run uh, part of the pilot here in Nova Scotia, uh, as well as in uh, BC, Alberta, and Ontario. And um, it's been overwhelmingly successful with both uh, companies and students. So we're excited to keep building on that pilot. I'll mention briefly in passing a program we have called STEP. This is a professional skills course. This really gets to uh, what was uh, Eric Grimson said yesterday about professional skills, charm school. The same issues with a lot of our graduate students. They don't have communication skills, even basic elements of business etiquette. We offer this program uh, on, gra on campuses across the country, free to graduate students, not just within our programs. Uh, it's been phenomenally uh, popular. Finally, uh, our, our other main program is MyTax Global Inc. Uh, Dr. Travis was just talking about uh, immigration. Uh, we believe that innovation is international. And so Global Inc. Uh, is a program designed to really build these sorts of international connections based around research and innovation. Uh, we have uh, run this as a pilot since 2009. In the last uh, three years, we've brought uh, over 500 students from Brazil, uh, China, India, and Mexico to spend summers with uh, Canadian researchers. Uh, about 25% of the students actually apply to come back as Canadian graduate students. And uh, that's, I mean, that's 25% of the whole total. Only 50% of them even go to grad school. So if we can recruit half of these students who are really exceptional students, we can recruit half of those that are gonna go to grad school to Canada. That's a, you know, these students could go anywhere. They could go to the United States, they could go to Europe, but they choose to come to Canada because of the experience they have. They represent not simply the potential future innovators and entrepreneurs, but even if they leave, they will be the hubs of a global innovation network. And it's important for us to build those sorts of connections. Um, recently, the federal budget actually dedicated $13 million over the next two years to Globalink. So we're in the process of expanding the program. We're going to build a corollary program to send Canadian students abroad to these countries, get research experience, bring industry in. We're very excited about um, some of the potential for Globalink, too. I'm getting the, the flag, so I'm just going to skim through and just mention a couple, you know, we do a lot here. You know, we, a project uh, with Satlantic, uh, with an oceanography student um, from Dalhousie, uh, publications, uh, you know, product improvement. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk today about Honeycrisp apples. I can tell you, uh, I didn't know about the sort of challenges and research challenges around Honeycrisp. I just know that whenever they're available at my grocery store, I buy them because they are delicious. And uh, I was uh, excited to see that we actually have done uh, even some mathematical modeling. We've supported uh, interns from Acadia and Dalhousie to work uh, on Honeycrisp research. Uh, and then this example here is really an, is an Elevate program with immunovaccine, uh, highly qualified scientist doing some work. And you know, I would just like to maybe, um, you know, there's a quote here from uh, Marianne Stanford, who's director of research at Immunovaccine. Uh, you know, I think I just want to highlight the last part of what she says here. Uh, you know, this is basically like, it, this partnership will better our science while exposing us to a highly skilled trainee that we can then draw on as we plan to expand our company. These sorts of programs of, of putting people into companies uh, you know, opens doors, it, it allows people some flexibility, it sees where they might go in the future. It gives, uh, you know, someone uh, like, like Olga the opportunity to work with a company and gain that sort of experience. So, where are we going? Um, you know, we are based out of this sort of program design and delivery. We're really moving now into a more comprehensive approach to try to sort of provide innovation solutions based on the programs that we've developed, based on new programs, but putting them together to address the, the, the wide range of complex innovation challenges facing industry. Uh, we are putting together clusters of projects involving Accelerate, Elevate, Globalink, all in different combinations. Uh, we have strategies for sectors like construction and mining, areas where we don't maybe uh, think of innovation as readily, but where we're finding a lot of receptivity. Um, we're building consortia based on our va vast network of uh, industry contacts and universities, uh, international connections through Globalink, and even working with some universities to integrate some of this experiential stuff into curriculum development for new programs. Uh, I'll end off uh, with just uh, some acknowledgements here because, like I say, we are we really take partnership seriously. Uh, you know, among our federal partners, I really want to highlight uh, ACOA and NRC IRAP, who have both been uh, exceptional partners here in Atlantic Canada. Uh, with uh, Nova Scotia, Labor and Advanced Education, and ERDT, um, I have both uh, been uh, worked with us, which, which is great. And then uh, Nova Scotia's universities, particularly Dalhousie and Martha, who have um, been exceptional partners for us and, uh, you know, who give us all sorts of feedback that we, uh, we value. So, uh, finally, 
I also couldn't figure out how to put on uh, industry representatives and students and professors who are the individuals who make the decisions to innovate. You know, the people at the companies who decide to invest a few thousand dollars in Accelerate, or the, the professors who decide to take some of their research time to do some applied research. Those little decisions are what add up to changing innovation habits in this country. So I want to thank them as well. And then finally, I want to thank you for uh, the time this afternoon to talk to you.